morning or good day to everyone tuning into the morning vlog. How are you doing this morning? The year 2019 is almost over. The decade is basically almost over. Oh, it's raining today, huh? It's a lot of rain today. But I don't use umbrellas, though. Guys, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good, got up early. I'm on my way to work. I made a change in my life. I start getting up earlier so that I could, you know, get to work on time without rushing. You know, I, I hate rushing. You know what I'm saying? But guys, let's start with the news. Let's start with the news. You know what? I've always wanted to do this type of video, you know, where I just talk about football news and just give my thoughts and opinions on them. And finally, I found a way how to do it. I found a way how to do it every day too. Without really taking up any of my free time. But this ain't free time, you know. This is time I'm going to work. But guys, West Ham has reappointed David Moyes as their new manager in an 18 month deal. Like, that sounds kind of short term to me. Short term way of thinking. And, you know, they're going backwards if you ask me. I made a whole video talking about that, so you guys could go check that video out. But on the Moyes, their first assignment would be this Wednesday. Again, 16th place, Bournemouth. So, West Ham currently 17th on 19 points. Bournemouth 16th on 20 points. So they need to win this game because I, I I don't know. I I don't know. I doubt they have a better goal difference than Bournemouth. Because when they had that keeper Roberto in goal, oh my god, where did they get that guy from? You telling me out of all the keepers in the world, you found this guy named Roberto who really can't keep? I'm lost. I'm lost for words here with this one. So, Moisey back in charge, former Everton, former Man United, Real Sociedad manager, is back in the Premier League to prove he still got it. So, guys, let me know your thoughts on David Moyes' reappointment in the comment section down below. In other big news, Norwegian international forward Red Bull Salzburg man well no has signed for Borussia Dortmund and he is said to have snubbed Manchester United because they only play Europa League football and Dortmund has been playing Champions League football for the past few seasons and even though Red Bull Salzburg got knocked out of the Champions League Borussia Dortmund are still in the Champions League so Erling Haaland will be eligible to play for Dortmund in the round of 16. So, the thing is, people are saying it's because Mina Raiola tried to, you know, say that Erling Haaland had a, a um, what, what's the thing called again, a release clause. And it was about 30 million and there was something about, there was some other clauses inside of the deal Raiola was trying to make with Man United and they pulled out sell on claws and all kind of things you know but I don't believe so I just believe that Haaland see how Man United are going this season and be like yo this team is not getting top four and I don't think they're gonna win the Europa League either so you know what I'm gonna go on over here to the yellow and black and they snatched them up for 17 million pounds 20 million euros that's a steal of a deal man united would have paid 30 million pounds for this player plus add-ons so you're telling me Dortmund got him for 17 million pounds and the deal went through smoothly so wasn't it the same same exact agent mina raiola okay uh, like i'm gonna believe that Haaland just don't want to play freaking Europa League football it's it's nothing else 
It is nothing else. But all the best to Erling Haaland, man. He's been very, very, very impressive this season. Almost 30 goals already. The man is on fire. The man is simply on fire. And the fact that he won't be playing in the Austrian Bundesliga anymore is a relief. We get to see him at the highest level. Champions League and in the German Bundesliga. So, all the best, man. And it's crazy. It's crazy. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is Norwegian. He's Norwegian and, you know, still didn't go to Man United. But he, he never should have went to Man United. A Man United player in Roy Keane ended his dad's playing career by breaking his knee, stamping him out. So why go back to that club? You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, his father probably told him, like, listen, man, listen, son, don't go and play for that club. Don't go play for that. That club is cursed. You hear what it's called? Reddit Devils. Like, don't do that. Don't do that. So, Haaland to Dortmund, all the best over there. They know how to develop young, young, young players. So, next thing I want to talk about. Both Liverpool and Manchester City benefits from VAR controversies in their games against Wolves and Sheffield United. Big, big talking points yesterday. Big, big VAR talking points yesterday. It, it, it's crazy how they choose to implement VAR, but they are yet to have it figured out. They're yet to have it down packed. Seriously, with all the money in the Premier League, you're telling me you can't get this thing right? You can't put in all the available technologies to get this thing right? You're being cheap, Premier League? Really? You're being cheap? No, 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 I can't believe this. We don't deserve this as fans. We don't deserve this as fans. But, but, if there was no VAR, the games would have been totally different. It would have been totally different. Let's start with the Man City game. It would have been totally different because that least Musse goal would have stood. Because it was very, very close margins for that offside. And the naked eye could not have picked that up. So, Sheffield would have opened the scoring, gone 1-0 up, and who knows if we could have come back and beat them but they're very 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 gritty team man very gritty team at times they have three and four strikers on the team on the field whenever they're behind and they always find a way to come back but not against city man not against city because guys we chose to drop benjamin mendy we dropped him he had to get dropped i don't even think it was because of well maybe because he's also like made of paper we had to, you know, drop him and rest him for this game. So he was rested and dropped. Because that horrible mistake against Wolves, man, oh my God. I could never, ever forget that. I can't ever, ever, ever forget that one. He had all the time in the world to clear the ball and was playing around. He was pussyfooting with the ball. Adama just bodied him and, and, and basically won the game. He won the game for Wolves. And it's because of Benjamin Mendy. Also... The Ukrainian came in for him. The Ukrainian came in for him. And the, with, with, with the Ukrainian, Zinchenko in the team, we have a very, very good record. He's not the best player, but by all means, get him in the team because he seems like he's a good luck charm. And he was injured for a lot of this season. Maybe that's why we haven't been winning games. This guy, Zinchenko, he's not the best player. But he's a hard worker, he gives his all, and we, we win when he's playing. So, by all means, keep him there and leave Mendy out. Seriously. Someone was arguing for Mendy yesterday, saying, oh, I forgot about all the crosses Mendy used to put in or whatnot. Listen to me carefully. That was then. This is now. Come on. This is a result-based sport. Results. If you can't help with the results, the W's or the draws, you got to go. You got to go. It's that simple. It's that simple. Young Eric Garcia, teenager, also made his full debut, replacing Nicholas Otamendi, and he played well. He played well because he's fast, he's agile, and he's very intelligent. Otamendi seems to be lacking some of that. Seriously. Seriously, he was dropped too. Don't tell me he was rested. He was dropped. Fernandinho and Garcia, I could see these guys playing again against Everton this coming Wednesday. Seriously. 
I could see them in the team against Everton. You know what I mean? There was also some other incidents like the quasi assist by referee Chris Kavanaugh and VR did not overturn that goal because Chris Kavanaugh never touched the ball. He impeded, but he never touched the ball. What Flex should have done was allow the ball to hit Chris Kavanaugh and that goal would have never been scored by Sergio Aguero. Legend, still playing in the Premier League, a legend. Let's make that one clear. Kevin De Bruyne had a great game as well. Awesome, awesome footballer. One of the best, if not the best in the Premier League. He's going to break Thierry Henry's record this season. Seriously. So, for Liverpool, man, if there's any more controversies in that game that I'm actually missing VR things, just let me know. Let me know. But there, there, there was a few handballs that was a given as well. Few fouls that, that was a given. But we end up winning the game to go to nil. Thank God. In the Liverpool game, man, that one was filled with controversy as well. For the Marnie goal, VAR had to be involved for that one. Really great shoulder pass from Adam Lallana, who I think had a very, very good game. He was one of Liverpool's best players out there. And the very injury-prone midfielder probably will be involved a lot more for the remainder of the season. Half, half the season done, Liverpool on top, and they had everything going their way today, yesterday. VAR just was in their corner. I'm not saying they are Liverpool. I'm just saying the VAR decisions went their way. With VAR, they could either go against you or they could go for you on the day. And it was City's and Liverpool's day for VAR to go for them. It's that simple. After Mane equalized, the young Pedro Neto, after Mane scored... The young Pedro Neto equalized and he celebrated first goal in the Premier League and he was going crazy, he was going nuts. But little did he know in the build up play, one of the players was offside. And again, the naked eye would have never caught that. The naked eye would have never caught that. And bam, flag raised offside. Offside break the young man's heart Wolves could never repeat it they had many opportunities they couldn't repeat it so many opportunities to score Saiz, Martinho, Vinaga Raul Jimenez Diego Jota they all had opportunities why none of these opportunities couldn't fall to Adama Traore because Liverpool ganged up on him they ganged up on him and they marked him very very well they handled him very, very well. I would have loved to see Adama start in this game. He's been starting the last 16 games. Why not that one? He ran out of steam or something? He used up all his juice against City? It has to be that. It's nothing else. It has to be that. But it was a it was a very VR friendly day for Liverpool and City. Also, must note one thing. Trent Alexander-Arnold having contrasting games. World-class performance against Leicester City. Having everybody calling him world-class. Having everybody drooling over his abilities. And then against Wolves, bam, he looked bang average. It's crazy. His deliveries weren't there. He tried some with his left foot. Didn't work. Didn't pick up any assist in the match. And then... In defense, he was tormented by Neto and Vinaga. I remember one time, I don't know if it was Neto or Vinaga, but they just kicked the ball past him and run past. I was like, oh my God. Trent Alexander-Arnold is getting sliced up and diced up in this game by Wolves. Like, wow. It's crazy. But I must say that against us, Wolverhampton Wanderers, they were Wolverines. They were Wolverines against us. But against Liverpool, it seems like they were werewolves with no full moon. You get it? You get it? Because they need full
full moon to like you know come out and be strong they were werewolves without a full moon basically basically wolverines against city werewolves without a full moon against liverpool can't put it any other way but another big talking point enough with liverpool and man city arsenal capitulated again again after going one nil up via an Aubameyang goal that was a brilliant headed goal led for 70 more minutes and then capitulated capitulated Bert Leno the German missing his punch from a set piece Jorginho who was brought on early by Frank Lampard that's a genius move by the way came on changed the entire game tapped it in for the equalizer and then Four minutes later, Tommy Abraham and William linked up to not make Bert Leno. Mustafi couldn't do anything. He was dropping back and allowed Chelsea to get in a more dangerous position. 2-1. Mesut Ozil, big standing ovation when he left the field. Seems like that might be his last game at the Emirates Stadium for Arsenal. He might be out going out on loan at Fenerbahce in Turkey a country that he has roots and he has been speaking a lot you know politically for being in the news a lot for the wrong well the non-footballing reasons if you ask me man if you ask me Arsenal got way too many Germans in their team if you ask me it was a catastrophic German meltdown on the day because Mesut Ozil he was quite ineffective. He's brilliant in patches, but just disappears. Mustafi, he needs to go. He needs to go. He needs to go to Paderborn or one of them clubs in freaking Germany, or Braunschweig, and one of them second division clubs he needs to go and play for. Seriously. He needs to go to Union, Berlin, or Freiburg, or... Hamburg, maybe he should go to Hamburg in the second division. That's where he needs to get his ass because he's not no top level defender to be playing at Arsenal. Arsenal, you have way too many Germans in your team if you ask me. You probably got the most Germans for any Premier League club. How many Germans do we have? We have two Germans. We have Leroy Sani, Ilkay Gundogan. I think that's it right no more we don't want no more we don't want no more because they don't seem like a good luck charm at all <laughs> you know what i'm saying look at rudiger and what happened to him the other day it's not a good time for the germans in the premier league not a good time leroy sana not a good time for germans in the premier league at all really not it's really 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 not but if you ask me man chelsea are now Kings of London. They defeated Tottenham. They defeated Arsenal. And, and they defeated Palace. But they failed to beat West Ham United. That's weird, right? You beat the better ones and you lost against the worst one. West Ham. And no disrespect to West Ham United fans. Because right now, you guys are indeed the worst indeed the worst club in london so guys according to mundo deportivo and latin sport for mundo deportivo they're saying that barcelona wants Klopp as their manager and for latin sport they're saying psg wants Klopp to replace thomas tuchel if you ask me all this talk is a joke because Klopp just signed till 2024 an extension at Liverpool and no way, no way. Well, maybe not. Never say never. Never say never. Maybe Klopp dreams of coaching Barcelona or PSG. But right now, what he's building at Liverpool, why leave that and go to PSG? Why leave that and go to Barcelona? The fans would never forgive you, Klopp, if you do such thing. So I don't see that happening. Also, Pep Guardiola breaks Mourinho's record as 
the fastest to 100 Premier League wins as a manager. With that win against Sheffield, that 2 0 win, Pep Guardiola completed his century in 134 games, comparing to Mourinho's 142 games. Aguero's goal also marked the hundred. The thousand, one thousand goal in Pep Guardiola's managerial career. So, hats off to Pep Guardiola. One hundred Premier League wins, the fastest. There was a race, all the managers, Pep Guardiola in front, like Usain Bolt. So, another one. Transfer before I go. According to the Daily Express, Liverpool are interested in Lille frontman Nigerian international Victor Osimen. Do I see this happening? I could see this happening. I could definitely see him as a backup option. I could see that. Because the reason why is Football Insider is also saying that Rian Brewster, the young forward, will be going out on Swan to Swansea City on loan for the remainder of the season in the championship. So Brewster out, Osimen in. Osimen could be part of the Champions League team as well, even though he was part of Lille's Champions League team. But he's one of the brightest prospects at Lille after Nicolas Pepe left. Osimen came in. Osimen 13 goals in league already, and he was scoring them for fun in the Champions League as well. He looks like a really, really good prospect. And he's African. He can link up with Mane and Mohamed Salah and also Naby Keita. So Victor Osimen to Liverpool. I, I bet the Liverpool fans will be excited. Also, it's soon to be Minamino time. Soon Minamino time. He'll be available for the Merseyside Derby in the FA Cup. I would love to see him start. And then, and then, he'll be available to play against Tottenham where him and Han Ming Son could be on the field at the same time. At the same damn time. That will be crazy. Minamino versus Han Ming Son. Who will be back? Who will be back after his suspension for dangerous play for kicking Antonio Rudiger in the nipple? So guys, that's all for today's segment. Appreciate you tuning in once again. If there's anything you want me to talk about, leave it in the comment section down below. I'll try to make note of it and include it in tomorrow's episode. I really, really appreciate everyone who has taken the time out of their busy days or not so busy days to tune into the morning vlog. Guys, the morning vlog is here to stay. It's here to stay because what I'm going to do with the morning vlog, I'll be talking about all the big news in football. Something I've wanted to do for a very, very, very long time and I finally got to do it. It's really good when you finally get to pursue the things you want to do. You know what I'm saying? So look out for the morning vlog every morning. Even if I'm not working, guys, I'm going to try to do the vlog to do like a news roundup but it'll be in my house when i'm not working but guys thank you very much for tuning in it's time to catch the bus to get to work and make sure you go check out all the other morning vlogs if you're new hit the subscribe button shout outs to everybody who's a fan of the morning vlog i really appreciate you don't forget leave a comment Hit the thumbs up button. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up button and share it with a friend on one of your social media outlets. From your boy Dominic Rich, have a great day. Until next time, peace out. Rich Squad.